Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of The Grid. My name's Scott Kelby, this guy here. Matt Kaliskowski. Boom! And there we are go. very excited to have on the set today one of the legends of sports photography and just one of the nicest guys in the business, Mr. Peter Reed Miller. Peter, welcome Thanks for aboard. having me. Oh, are you kidding? So Peter, we kind of changed the format of The Grid a bit. Okay. We just jump right in. All right. Are you ready? Yes. Talk. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so Peter. Stage is yours. No, so, <laughs> hey, so let me, uh, now let me, can I set this up a little, Peter? So, um, uh, I mean, you've had over 100 covers of Sports Illustrated magazine. Wow. Right, yep. Now, I, did I tell you I signed a deal with Sports Illustrated? Really? I swear really? I did, seriously. I get 12 issues. No, it's it's a whole year of issues. And I think it was like 1995. Did you That's get the shoe deal. phone? No, I didn't get the shoe phone. I was kind of disappointed, yeah, but I'm yeah. excited about but signing. But the swimsuit <laughs> issue comes yeah, at yeah, the I'm, end of the year. I'm excited about the whole the whole deal. So anyway, Peter, so you, you had a, I threw you off of that, didn't I? Yeah. So I, <laughs> I, I uh, uh, okay, back to our story. So you, you're this legend of sports photography, and, and now you're doing these workshops, and that's the first time I really got to meet you. I went right. to Atlanta. Two years ago? Two years ago, yeah. Two yeah. years ago, um, you were giving a workshop in Atlanta, and I got to come up there, and I was blown away. I mean, I came back and I told everybody, I, I was there, I only get to go for one day. So your workshops are like a week long. Yeah, they're a week. They're a week. And I, I was there for one day, and it was just such a great day. And that kind of led to you and I doing a class together. Yes, yes. So I, 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 at, the end of the, at the end of the workshop, I went to Peter and said, Peter, you got to come and do this workshop. I'm saying, I saw you like two days later in New York. And I'm right, like, right. I have this idea for a workshop. And, and so the class that we did for Kelby One was about uh, what makes a great sports picture. And so uh, that was one of the things that I got from your workshop. So what I wanted to talk to, about today was not what makes a great sports picture because we have a class on that. Right, right. What right. I wanted to talk to you about was people that go to your workshops, like, I, I know that like Matt and I do landscape workshops and, and well, I don't do them anymore. Matt does landscape <laughs> workshops. And we would notice that at the end of the week that, that no matter how many workshops we did, people struggled with the same problems, yeah, they, right? Yeah. So that's what I wanted to talk to you about today, if that's okay. And, and, and of course, we, we welcome your, uh, all of your comments and stuff. So if you have any comments or questions you want to ask Peter, Peter can only be here for the first half of the show. He's catching a flight out, so he's just kind of passing through. Yeah. Um, but uh, he's going to be here for the first half. We'll get to your questions if you want to ask him. But while we're waiting for some questions to pop in, what I wanted to ask you was, what are the stuff that you're finding that your your, your students are struggling with? But, of course, it won't be any fun if we just list a bunch of problems. <laughs> but, like, the kind of things that you guys focus on and, like, like what are sports photographers struggling with today? I don't mean, like, full-time working pros. I mean, like, you know, people that really want to learn and come to your workshop. Up and, stuff up and like coming, that. yeah. Um, well, I think the first thing is they want to know how to use their equipment. Uh, a lot of these folks have acquired some really pretty good equipment these days, but they really need to know how to wring it out and get the most out of it. Uh, we shoot a lot of sports. We shoot one to two events a day, and so all sorts of different things, polo, mountain biking, you know, football, baseball, basketball, the regular stuff, but other stuff, fencing. And I think they want to see how you shoot these different sports, or they have uh, their son's coming up to high school and he's going to be playing football and they want to know how to shoot football. And so we go out and we do this. And then as they come back, they edit their images. We do a show every day and I go through and I, I critique and I say, okay, this might work. And, and one of the big things is cropping. Um, I didn't say this, but a friend of mine did. There's no sports photo in the world that can't be improved with cropping. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. And I really drill that in the, into them. Um, so it's, it's really it's shoot and then uh, response and critique and shoot again. And, um, you know, we have people from Canon. We have, uh, I have other people come in, other experts that deal with specific areas like, like uh, speed light technology and arena lighting and all that but basically it's about shooting showing me the pictures and me talking about what what they should and could do now i know that a lot of photographers when they hear the word cropping they go oh we're, we're I'm not supposed to get it right in camera we're not supposed to crop yeah. right but it's different for sports sports is messy sports is messy it doesn't always just fall the way you want and if you, you know, you really learn, you, it's better to be safe than sorry. It's better to have a little bit of extra frame, especially with the cameras now. The files are so good. You can crop them. Better that than cutting off a leg, cutting off an arm. That's really a no-no to me. So shoot a little wider and then bring it in, crop it in. 
Right, and, and and you'll hear this again and again from editors that are editing Chef Cropper. So I, I, I had some of my images when I was at your workshop, and I showed Peter, and I said, will you take a couple a look at my, my football images? Let me tell you what, you never really want to hand Peter Reed Miller your football <laughs> images. But he did this, he'd go, crop that tighter, tighter. Can you get in tighter? <laughs> Why is this ref even in this shot? Why is he there? Tighter, tighter. That could be tighter. It was, it was, it was, I mean, and it sounds like, it sounds like you're saying the same thing again and again. But I want you guys to think about this, right? Where yeah, is where yeah. are sports images going today? On the web. On the web. On the web. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How big are most sports images going to be seen? Not this big. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If that image doesn't have impact, if you can't really see clearly what's going on, forget it. So, and and whether you're shooting high school or college or whatever. Where are your high school pictures going to be shown? On the web. On the web. Even your youth sports. Yeah. You know, your, your, your six-year-old daughter playing soccer. I mean, that's going to go up on the web. And you, you don't want to see the cars, the moms in, 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 the, in the chairs, all that stuff. You want to see the, the players. Yeah. Yeah, type. And that, was, that, really, I, 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 that really drove it home for me. When you have someone go through your whole thing and you think you're cropping tight, and he goes, that could be tighter. Well, that could be tighter and all. But you know what it is? It's like, ooh, ooh, is this some of his stuff? That could be tighter. <laughs> no, it couldn't. <laughs> oh, God. I love looking at your stuff. Oh, that's good. Because you do a lot of portrait work, too. Yeah, I do. I do. It's about half of what I do. So it's, I really have the best of both worlds. I get to go to games, be at the action, be with all the excitement. Oh, like and then when I, when I want more control, I go in the studio and I, I shoot now, portrait. Oh, I wish we could. Can we go back one? Can we go back? I love what you did with this shot. And and you know what I love too is so many people will look at a shot and they want to find a technical reason that what's wrong with it. And what they would say is, well, really, she should be on the right side of the frame. She's up against the edge and that's all. But you know what it is? Once you know what the rule is, then you can break it and make amazing shots like this. And I think that a lot of photographers really get hung up on the technical stuff. And then when you see a shot like that that so works and it broke the rule, and it's because once you know what the rule is, you can intentionally break it. Yeah, yeah. A lot of questions coming in. Can I get to some of these, Peter? Because I, sure, I, sure. I want to I grab some of these. So Steve from Out of My Mind Photo. I love Steven at Out of My Mind Photo. <laughs> That's a great right there name. <clears throat> uh, question for Peter. When shooting outdoors while it's raining or snowing, what do you use to keep your gear from being exposed to the elements? Uh, I use the uh, Think Tank rain covers, the hydrophobia. I Everybody believe does, called. right? Yeah, they're really nice. I mean, they're, I'm not saying they're the only ones, but they're the ones I use, and, and they've done a great job. Uh, and then, you know, just raincoats, coats, hand warmers, everything. I mean, when I do a cold weather game, I got a whole routine. <laughs> Can I tell you something? Well, Peter said that Think Tank photo, those, yeah. they're not the only ones. They're just the only ones. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's all you see on the sidelines. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Their yeah. stuff is really, really good. Yeah. Well, it uh, holds up, too. It's dur I mean, there, oh, there's, yeah. there's cheaper stuff out there, but it, it'll fall apart on you and, yeah. and pretty much yeah. after the first time you use it. Mr. King asks, did you take the covers with Eric Dickerson and the one with Super Duper? Mm. Mm. I have two SI Eric Dickerson covers. Um, so we'll just say yes. Ding. Yes. I don't know <laughs> what he's saying. One of them was shot with a thousand millimeter mirror lens. Maybe that's what he's talking about. Wow. The one, uh, the day he broke the single season rushing record, that was a thousand mirror lens. A thousand, a thousand millimeter? millimeter? Zeiss, yeah. Zeiss? Yeah, yeah. It's a nice lens there. It's very nice. He likes lens. the Zeiss? Very nice lens. Zeiss is nice. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, S.A. Richer asks, or Sir Richer, or Sa a Richer. Sa asks, Richer. <laughs> What challenges are presented to a photographer with curling? Staying awake. <laughs> Whoa! No, no, no. My, I'm sorry to all the, oh, all the curlers no, out no. there. Tw tweet of the week. Quote of the week. <laughs> Quote of the, come on, that's got to be tweet of the week. What challenge are presented to a photographer with curling? Staying awake. Was that what the answer was? That was the answer. Um, no, Dash really. Peter Reed Miller. I, to be honest with you, I have never shot curling. Uh, when I've uh, done the Winter Olympics, it's always been a far off venue that I never quite got to. So I don't really know. I mean, I think there are angles. I think there, there, is, there are some moments when they're doing the thing with the brooms, but 
you know, <laughs> few and far between. I'm Are afraid. they called brooms? Are they well, called? Bro- yeah, I think they're. Well, called they, have, they have a fancy. It's got to be called. It can't yeah, be. There's, there's be no better. way and, it can and, be called and, a broom. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Moving you're right. device yeah. or yes, something. Hey, Carlos asked a question. He says, uh, "When you're a sports photographer for SI, now you're you you retired from SI full time. You're not. Yes, yeah, not yeah, I'm on contributing. Staff. I'm a contributor. So you're a contributor. Now. Yeah. Uh, so when you're a sports photographer for SI, do they buy your equipment? To an extent. Uh, they provide a, a certain amount of equipment. Um, you in, usually end up buying more yourself, but they give you the <laughs> basics. So, now the basics are what, like a 50 millimeter and some <laughs> knee pads, uh, three or four uh, latest digital bodies, uh, 400, 70, 200 a wide. Mm-hmm. You know, and then you kind of fill it in from there. You know, at six, and then you get to eight, and then you go. You know, but that that's <laughs> the way it goes. Yeah. English Bob says. Shooting, sports shooting is expensive, I think. Hey, can I talk to that one? Yeah. Yeah. Because, so, so you, and I, you and I shot a few uh, USF Bulls games. Yeah. yeah. Um, I actually had a, a season credential to shoot USF Bulls games, and I, re- and I realized after shooting two, I'm really bad at it. <laughs> so, oh, I wouldn't say that you were bad at it. Well, you know what the problem is? Is I want to watch the game. Yeah, that well, is, you so can't watch here's, the game. So That's here, here, here's yeah. what would happen is I've got this big lens, and the play would start, and I'm like, Oh, oh crap! And I'd have to. But one thing I realized is sports. There, not you, because you're a nice guy, and you're a nice guy. But really. there are many sports photographers that are just angry. They walk by, and you're like, "Hey, how you doing?" <laughs> and I think it's because their gear is so damn expensive. <laughs> I think I think it's because it costs so much money. Well, they get out there, and they're just mad. Their 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 gear is so expensive. <laughs> they're not getting paid very much, so that's why they're yeah. angry. See, yeah. I go shoot landscapes. I walk by. Everybody's everybody's saying, friendly. Oh, everybody's yeah. friendly. Yeah. And everything. You go on the sidelines, but, but man. They want to kill you. No, no. But seriously, and I agree. <laughs> it, it is by sport. Because if you go shoot motorsports, it's a different crew. Mm-hmm. The photographers that yeah. shoot motorsports are super nice and they're friendly yeah. and they're having a great time. You get on a football sideline and you are exactly <laughs> right. You talk about the grumpiest people. That's why I love to go shoot with the Falcons. Because I, I shoot the Tampa Bay Bucks mm-hmm. home home games and they're all, everyone looks at you. I got a couple of buddies now that, that yeah. I shoot with, you know, like uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go by in there and we'll chat. We'll talk, you know, and stuff. But let me tell you, uh, the rest of the crew is pretty. But I go up with the Falcons in Georgia. Oh nicest. yeah, it's, it's a very mellow. It's feeling. a, it's a, those, <laughs> yeah. it's a, they have, a, uh, they, you know what it is, suit Sometimes they've set the tone. I mean, you go up there and everyone's so friendly, and the food is amazing. <laughs> so as long to, as long as the Falcons aren't playing a team I like, I'll maybe I'll, right, I'll try right, shooting them. Yeah. Oh, you would love it up there. No, it's really <laughs> so great. I really watch the game. You know, and they have like really. I mean, you <laughs> go up there, you get southern food. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, like barbecue. fried chicken and barbecue, barbecue and, and, and mashed there. potatoes and all kinds of crazy stuff. And then you go on the field, and you're like, woo! <laughs> You've got this, like, food coma. It's awesome. All right. Hey, uh, we, we we do have more Peter Reed Miller when he comes back. Again, he's only here for half the show, so we're going to try to get to as many questions as we can after the break. We do have the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge coming up at the end of the show. Uh, I mentioned that I would be doing it, but uh, for reasons we will discuss soon, Matt will also be doing it. Matt's is as equally as unfair as mine is. <laughs> so anyway, but uh, we're, that's coming up here. We're going to be doing it live on the grid. We're going to literally just walk out uh, the doors of the studio here and uh, let it rip. Peter will be safely on a plane by that time. I, if I, only I'd known, I would have changed my Dude, plane. He really was. He was bummed. He, he yeah, wanted yeah, to do it. Yeah, oh, I'm yeah. telling you what, it would have been an honor to have had you throw water on me, and then I would have gotten a team yeah, of 40 it's... people to throw it on you. Anyway, we're going to take a short break. Stick around for all that. And, of course, we have giveaways and stuff and all that kind of garbage. Coming up in just a few minutes right here, Garbage. live on the grid with Peter Reed Miller, the man, the legend.
Hey, Matt, bring us in. Hey, we're back. Hey. It's, you're hey. supposed to tell me before it starts to bring <laughs> us in. I thought if I didn't say anything, you would just do it automatically. Like I was, I was like, busy I looking back there. There's right. a flurry okay. of activity well, wait, back didn't there. Didn't we say we were going to let the guests go? Yes. Hey, can we go to commercial real quick and come back? And then we'll let Peter bring us in. <laughs> Any commercial's fine. Really, yeah. it doesn't matter. No one watches them anyway. Just go to black. Or just go to black. Yeah. And then Peter can bring us in. Okay. Hey, we're back with Scott, Matt, and Peter Reed Miller. That was good, dude. Hey. Who's, hey. This, who's this Peter Reed Miller <laughs> who's guy? Who's now? Is he? <laughs> All right. Hey, we got questions are okay. pouring in. Thank you, guys, because I know, like, like we have a... Oh, wow. We, we've had, like, two sports shows in, in, in two weeks, which is very unusual for us. Um, but uh, here we go. David M. has a question. Um, if you love shots that are all super tight... I think the world loves them, especially photo editors. What is the secret to a fantastic wide shot? And dude, you've got some. You've got some amazing, yeah. like, two-page, you know, double truck stuff that I've seen in SI. But what's the secret? Well, the wide shot sets the scene. A wide shot tells the story. Uh, you know, yeah, I have a shot that's uh, from a game up in uh, in Oregon in, in the fog, and I could crop it tight. It's a USC tight end scoring a touchdown. Crop it tight. It's a guy running across the line with his hand up in the ball. Shoot wide, you see that the whole field's covered with fog. Off in the distance, you see the Oregon State players in despair. Whole thing, it tells a story. It's not just the one tight. I mean, I, I do love tight cropping, but I'm also a big fan of a wide shot if, if it tells the story, if it's done right. So that's what you would, that's what your secret is, is do the wide shot if it, if it can tell a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Scott King asks, uh, hey, by the way, Scott King, Scott King's one of our, so Scott King has been working as hard as anybody in this industry. And really? let me tell you what he's been doing for the last few weeks. Every day he goes to a different burger place because he's taking Brad and I out for burgers next <laughs> Thursday night in Kansas City, right? <laughs> yes, Brad, it's next Thursday night. You'll be there, by the way. Right. So anyway, he's been going to burger places and every day he posts a new picture of a burger because he is seeking the best burger in all of Kansas City. Wow. So that when Brad and I come, he can take us to an amazing burger because he knows that if it is not the best burger in Kansas City, that he will be publicly You'll flogged. Be out of there, yeah. Oh, is yeah. Kansas City the barbecue place? That's it the is. Barbecue place, it yeah. is, but we're there for two nights. So Scott yeah. King, burgers, dude. Yeah. all the meat in Kansas City is good because I think you know yeah. it all yeah. comes from there. They take it serious. Yeah. So uh, uh, Scott wants to know how you got into shooting sports. Like, what gravitated you toward sports and not another photography genre? And by the way, Scott has a habit of trying to use French words in every right, language. Right. Right. Well, uh, I started shooting in high school and then college, not as a major, but a as a sort of a sideline. Shot for the school paper, the yearbook, same thing at USC. Uh, I did shoot everything, and I still do, but you do get pigeonholed in this business, and that's sort of where I drifted, and it just sort of, you know, the more sports I shot, the more sports assignments I got, and that's where the work was, and, and I loved it, and I thought, wow, if I can do this all my life, this is great. This is a good deal. So... It just sort of happened. Uh, I do enjoy portraiture. I enjoy a lot of other photography, but uh, sports is kind of the meat and potatoes. There you go. So we got a question from um, Shelly asks, uh, I want to follow someone shooting basketball to see if it's something I want to get into. How do you suggest getting in with someone to mentor me? I know there are regulations at the arenas for getting passes into games and the sidelines and stuff like that. That there are, Shelly. It would be really tough to have an extra non-working person, especially in basketball, because it's very tight on, on the end lines. There's not that much room. Uh, I would suggest instead that you maybe just try and start shooting some high school basketball, youth basketball. Just try and shoot. Look, look at the stuff that runs in Sports Illustrated. Look at the stuff that's up on the, on the Getty site, the AP site. And then try and go out and try and make those pictures. When you have amassed a body of work, I think you could then go and contact some photographers that you know shoot basketball and say, hey, will you take a look at my stuff? That's, that's yeah, what yeah. I would do. So you have to have this, something to show them. This leads yeah. into the next question from Sarah B. So Sarah asks, if you were shooting an event for someone else, which, by the way, you were always shooting an event for <laughs> yeah. someone else, you're never shooting an event for you because they won't let you in. Right, so right. if you're shooting an event for someone else, can you use the images you shoot in your portfolio? I think we just saw your portfolio. Yeah, yeah. and those were all shot for someone else. I think basically, yes, unless you have a specific arrangement where uh, the your client doesn't want you to use the images. But, I mean, I think anything that that I use images that I've shot for lots of clients, but I only use them in the context of this is my work. 
I don't put them up as, in terms of uh, this athlete or so and so endorses Peter Reed Miller photography. But here's I'm Peter Reed Miller. Here's my work, and right. that's the way I show it. Right, so I and, show it today. And that's very very common. That's how you see uh, books. You'll see all kinds of books from photographers uh, showing their work, and it is showing their work and things like that. Okay, Tim in Boston has a really good question. Do you think that with more and more images being put on the web? And the recent layoffs with photographers at major newspapers, which, by the way, those are two different topics, but yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll roll them together, <laughs> right. that Why there not? will ever be an, a need on a large scale for sports photographers. It's, it's, uh, it's not a growth field right now, but I think there is a steady demand, and I think that uh, the web is, is fueling a lot of that demand. Yes, and, I agree. So, you know, it is. We've seen a a sea change in, in the whole field over the past 10 years, 15 years. And, you know, a lot of people just say, well, there's nowhere to go, but, but there is, you just have to find it and, you, and it's different. And you're not going to submit, you're not going to work for Sports Illustrated. You're probably not going to work for a newspaper, but there are still plenty of, of outlets for good sports photography. I think there'll always be work for good, committed, passionate, creative sports photographers. There you go. Uh, hey, Scott King just said, He's in Houston. He's not in Kansas City. So you know what? I was so I was sitting in my assistant Lynn's office today, and she was asking me about Houston. And I go, I know I'm doing something in Houston. All this time, I keep thinking I'm going to see Scott next Thursday. Mm. Now that he's in Houston, I've lost my desire to go to Houston. <laughs> no, it's just so funny because I'm thinking he's got a lot of good burger places. He was in Kansas City. Now, I was just either. surprised well, Burger in Kansas City came Well, but up. now, yeah. but there's somebody else I'm supposed to meet in Kansas City then. Is he going to have a burger Sean, party? it's Sean we're going to... Okay, Scott, you don't have to move. <laughs> okay, uh, this is a great question, and we don't have very much time. I don't think so he's going to like the answer to it. Yeah. No, you're not going to like this answer, Mickey. Mickey Stein asks, do you really need pro stuff to shoot sports? Kind of. Yeah, you do. Um, you know, after a certain point, I mean, certainly... Different sports vary. I mean, you can shoot basketball with with a, a 50 millimeter lens under the basket, and you're and you're fine. But if you're going to shoot football, soccer, the field sports, you really need some sort of long lens. If you're going to shoot at night, you really need uh, some sort of fairly fast long lens. Um, you need a camera that's got a pretty decent frame rate, that's got fast autofocus. Uh, you kind of all need. That. You, I hate to give you, that answer. I hate I to know, say no, spend money. It, it's true because I, I I I've heard the question before too, and it's like. Be, for sports, for good sports photos, you need the most expensive part of every part of the gear. Yeah, like yeah. for the lens, like you know, there'd be no reason for a landscape photographer to have a 400 2.8. Right. right. But for sports, you need the 2.8. Yeah. 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 And you know, a landscape might want to shoot at 400, but they could shoot the 100 to 400. Yeah. Yeah. Any of that. And yeah. so, and then your your camera body. I mean, yeah. you you need the high ISO performance right. to be able to shoot indoors yeah. and and at night. So. Yeah, and and Matt's right, and 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 I agree with. with with both of them. You know what it is, is Mickey, is can you, do you really need pro stuff to shoot sports, sports? I think the answer is to get the kind of shots that you want, yes. Yeah. You can shoot sports with whatever mm -hmm. you have, but you're never going to get the kind of images that you want. They're not going to be the stuff that you That got you to, to want to shoot yeah. sports. And, and it won't get you you're serious to, about it. Yeah, he's not going to get you to shoot college ball. You're not going to yeah. get, it's, it's your kind of, you know, it's, Sorry, it's interesting when I, <laughs> When I applied for the, not, not the people I'm shooting for now, but the, another wire service I shot for, in their application, they basically said, these will be the minimum things you will need. And they said, you're going to yeah. need either a, like a Canon 1DX or a Nikon D4, whatever it was, whatever the equivalent cameras were. This was many years ago, 45 years ago. No, it was just a few years ago. But, uh, but it said, like, it, you, you're going to need, it, it told you you're going to need at least a 300 millimeter lens with a 1.4 tele. Or, and it, it had a basic, and, and then you were supposed to check off which things you actually owned. Yeah. That was in the application. And that wasn't for Getty or somebody. That was like just, you know. So anyway... It was, uh, it's an eye-opening moment. I was, I was lucky to be able to say, I will borrow these things. <laughs> All right, uh, Jock Goodman. we got a lot of questions. God, these yeah. are great questions. Yeah. Yeah. Jock Goodman asks, uh, for Peter, have you ever received flack for showing an agony of defeat photo by an athlete? No, I mean that's what you're there for, and that's what they're there for. You're not going into their house and yeah. and they're on TV. A, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're not going and shooting, uh, you know, shooting somebody having a fight with their wife or something like that. You're on a you're a public place. There, it, it's all about the emotions, it's about tears and cheers, and that's that's what you're there for. Okay, we just have a couple more questions. I want to get to this one for John Swartz. He's a friend of ours, but not because he's a friend of ours. It's because he's got a really good question. John asks, is there any sport or athlete that you wish you could shoot but haven't yet? 
Yeah. That's a good question. I, you know, I always, I, I've always wanted to shoot the Indy 500, and I never have. And it, you know, for it, kind of years, it was, it wasn't that big a deal when this, when the uh, two uh, organizations split. But now it's back together, and I've just always had a fast. I don't really shoot a lot of motorsports, but that, that's one that I would, I would always like to shoot. You know, I, I would love to shoot the Indy 500. I got invited to do it. So I did some stuff. I actually shot for the Indy Racing League themselves. Mm -hmm. And they invited me after I did, I, I covered an event from here in Florida. They said, hey, we'd like you to come and do the same thing for us at the Indy 500. The same exact day, I was doing a seminar in San Francisco. Oh, man. Next time, call me. I hung me. myself. OK. Hey, can we, um, can we at least get to Aaron's question? Like, I think that could be a good yeah. last question. Uh, oh, yes. yeah, this, yeah. All right, this is going to be the last one. So I hate to do this, but oh, gosh, there's so many good stuff. Uh, Aaron. Aaron. <laughs> I thought so you were saying yeah, that. Aaron says, Aaron says, how, read it? Come on, I gotta answer Aaron it. says, how do you suggest making the jump into professional sports photography from hobby, leisure, local? Yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, there, there's no clear path. You really have to just work every angle you possibly can. I mean, if there's a, if there's a school, a college that you can shoot for, even a high school where you can offer your services just for free to begin with, I mean, you basically have to start out shooting for free for somebody and, and hope that you will impress them enough and you or your work will be seen by other people and that you will, can finally get into the point where somebody's paying you. Uh, to do it, but you just got to get getting out there and shooting as much as you can and getting the work exposed as much as you can is, is really the most important things. Yeah, I, you, know, I, you know, I had to, you also have to, like when you finally do get to a point where you want to apply to get a, to get a gig, right, for a wire service or a magazine or whatever, not only are you going to have to check all the boxes that you have the gear, they're going to want to see your work. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. And, and it's okay if you send in high school work and college work because they're going to, they're not going to yeah. look at is that athlete big enough? Right. right. They're going to go, is this a pro quality shot? Is this the decisive moment? Yes. Yeah. Can, the, the peak can we tell Andy, can we tell our buddy Andy's story really quick? How he Andy's started got a shoot? great story. Yeah. So our, uh, our buddy, this, this would be for Aaron, our buddy, Andy, um, he lives down in St. Petersburg, Florida. Well, he was, he was walking around like downtown St. Pete at night one night. And he's a photographer. He'd been a, a friend of Scott. Was he shooting like a Fourth of July parade or something? I, I forget, but he took, he took a really great shot of downtown St. Pete. So he just went home that night and he just mailed it, emailed it to uh, to the city of St. Pete and just said, hey, you know, I was out there, beautiful city, and uh, by my donation back to you, have the shot, use it however you need to. Well, they liked it and they contacted him back and they said, can we use it for this? And he's like, of course. And they said, do you have any other, you know, what do you shoot? And he's like, oh, I love to shoot sports. His kid was in college and he shot his kid all the time. Um, and they said... I don't even think, I think they asked to see some of his college shots from his kids' games, and before you know it, he was shit on the sidelines of uh, the, the not the sidelines, Bulls? but the the Rays, the Tampa oh, yeah. Bay Rays who wow. play in St. Wow. Pete. Wow, in the photo wells, yeah. That led to him being on the sideline of the Bucks, yeah, which wow. led to him pretty much being on the sidelines of whatever should, team he wanted to. Should we tell to. Matt that baseball doesn't have sidelines? I just, that's why I said, is hard. that's why I said, well. that's why I stopped when I said well. sidelines. I said sidelines, I said, no, that's not no. right, because it was a raise. I mean, that's a great story, and it just shows you that you just never know what it's yeah. going to take. It's, it's, there's not a clear, like, that used to be, a, be an assistant, work on a newspaper, work your way up. That, that, that doesn't work anymore. But other things do. There's always a way. Yep. All right. Well, Peter, thank you very much. We're three minutes over that we promised we would keep you. But I mean, there's just so many good questions. <laughs> yeah, we can go I wish on I could on. stay. Wish hey, so stay. you do have a workshop coming up in Atlanta. Yes, I do. And Atlanta. you've got just a couple of spots left. A couple left. of spots left. Uh, it's October 6th through 11th in Atlanta. We're going to shoot uh, uh, baseball. We're going to shoot college football, Georgia State in the in the Georgia Dome. We're probably going to be shooting some polo. Yeah. Can, uh, can, I, can I say one thing? Sure. This blew me away. The last time you did Atlanta that I was there, you got all of your students that were in the workshop on the sidelines of a, of a college game, a yeah. big college game. Yeah. How do you do that? <sighs> he's Peter Reed Miller. You, yeah, yeah, I know, he's Peter Reed Miller. Me. He calls yeah. up and says, I'm Peter Reed Miller, and they're like, our stadium okay. is yours. Anyway, thank you very much yeah. for being on here. Where can they go learn more about you, where your workshops and all, your website? PeterReedMiller.com, P-E-T-E-R-R-E-A-D-M-I-L-L-E-R.com. Wow, out. you know how to spell it really good. Yeah, that's really yeah. just like you're in your home. <laughs> Peter, thank you very much for Thanks, being on Scott. the show, man. Have safe travels. Thanks, man. Yeah. Arifus yeah. bump from here. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to take a short break. We come back. We, uh, we want to talk about, we have a number of things to talk about. A uh, couple of good topics for today, and, and we only have 35 minutes left. And then at the end of the show, we are going to do the ALS Ice Bug. <sighs> 
Bucket Challenge live here on the Ooh. grid. So we'll see you guys in a minute. And thanks, Peter, again. Thank you. We all know the difference a great teacher makes. They inspire you, challenge you, and push you to do the things you never thought you could. For creatives, that means you've got to know your tools inside and out, whether it's Photoshop or photography, lighting or Lightroom, in design or after effects. And while there are free videos out there, you have to watch 30 bad ones just to find a decent one. And a lot of times, the techniques are either outdated, complicated, or just plain wrong. What we need is a better way to learn. One that connects amazing teachers with creative people all over the world, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. A thriving educational community with nothing but the most talented, engaging, and respected teachers in the industry. Then we simplify the whole learning process with short, clear, concise classes. That's exactly what we've created for you right here at Kelby One. MPix Pro, the full-service online photography lab, helping you grow your business with pro-quality photo products and stellar services. Get started at mpixpro.com. Need a little boost? Then fill up on fuel. Packed with practical tools and tips that will help you quickly advance your creative skills, these short ebooks get right to the heart of what you need to learn. Learn to shoot breathtaking nature photography, teach yourself game design, or impress your friends with the rock and design of your new website. Written by top authors and trainers, Fuelbooks offers friendly, straightforward instruction and innovative ideas to power your creativity. Starting at just $5, every Fuelbook comes in three formats, Mobi, EPUB, and an elegantly laid out PDF, so you can choose the reading experience that works best for you on whatever device you choose. Fuelbooks, designed to inspire you. Hey, Rick. Back. We're back. Hey, Peter was good, right? He's great. God, he's good. He's got, you know, hey, I, I don't want to push her on stuff, but what the heck, I'm going to. Uh, <laughs> Peter and I did a class, and, and and I asked Peter to do this class because I, when, when I got to, the, you know, I only went to his class for one day. When I got there, the night before, they had shot a, a college volleyball match, right? And so my interest in college volleyball is very low. Not as low as curling in general, but low. So anyway... So I'm sitting there, and he starts off with critiques, and he's showing, he's showing yeah. these things, and, and I, I'm, I'm really, I'm like, oh, volleyball, it was absolutely fascinating because number one, I, I have no idea how to shoot volleyball. I just never even really thought. Oh, there it is. What makes a great sports photo? So I never, I never, I never gave it two minutes thought, and then he, and so what I would do is what I do with every other sport. I would try to get really, really low, you know, get low and all. And he, first thing he says is, you never want to shoot volleyball low. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Oops. And he goes, well, at Sports Illustrated, we, we try to get up in the stands, or if it's a big event, we actually use a bucket and go up high because that's where the angle is. You don't want to be shooting up players' noses all day long. All the exciting shots happen when they're up in the air. Not all the shots. A lot of the shining shots happen when they're up in the air and they're spiking the ball. And all this kind of, I'm like, oh. And so the more he talked, I'm, I started taking all these notes because I thought, well, one day, what if I get assigned to a... Mm -hmm. to shoot a volleyball thing. So I started writing down all these notes and I'm like, you know what? This would make an amazing class to go through all the different sports and basically go, here's where to stand. Here's where to shoot. I think that's what here's, people want too. I, I think a lot of people want to know what makes a good yeah. volleyball shot. So if you did go and cover a volleyball thing or your kids are playing volleyball, what makes a good volleyball shot? So he did that sport by sport by sport, and it was really, it was just terrific. That's a great class. It, it really, and I think really you can, is. Because you know what? I think a lot of people want to know that stuff, and I haven't really seen, uh, if you can't make his workshop, it's, uh, it'd be hard to, yeah, it's to the next find best all thing. that stuff. Now, if you're a Kelby One subscriber, it's free. Go watch it. It's already part of your, your package. But Because um, you get to watch every class we have, like 500 classes. But if you're not a Kelby One subscriber, you know you can go rent the class. I think you rent it for what 20 48 hours or something for like I'm not kidding 7 bucks. <laughs> it's like $7. It's really really inexpensive. So go to kelby1.com, look for Peter Reed Miller and just watch his class. Now I'm in the class with him but I'm just kind of there as a keep it moving moderator kind of guy. I'm not I let him do all the I talking. Candy. I'm there for the eye candy. Absolutely. Hey, uh just do want to mention too that I'm going to be uh, next week. I'm in St. Louis and I'm in Kansas City. St. Louis, 
Kansas City uh, with my Shoot Like a Pro Tour. I have not been to Kansas City 12 years, 14 years. I don't know wow. how I, 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 I don't know how it happened. I haven't been to St. Louis a whole bunch. Um, I was there for a, a co photography conference for the FBI. That's as close as I can remember. Anyway, but we will be in Kansas City, so I hope you'll come out and check check out one of those two dates. Apparently, I'll be in Houston sometime soon as hey, well. Hey, by the way, next month I'm in Livonia. Livonia! So get that out there. There we go. Look at that Livonia. Oh, you're in Houston? You're in Houston. I'm in Houston, and that's not until September 26th. That's after Photoshop World. Dude, it's like just over a month away. Yeah. Houston. It's actually closer than you think. Houston, we have a problem. All right. So anyway, I hope you'll come out and check out those. Uh, my seminars, Brad will be there too, and we'll be... Uh, We'll be eating with Sean and I, not Scott King. And we not kept, at a burger place. We keep place. being like going, why doesn't Scott King call us? It would be so sad. Not at a burger place. Hey, so I do want to talk. We do have a couple of topics. Uh, so one of the topics I want to talk about is we just announced last week the Worldwide Photo Walk. Now, last week was the week we changed the format of our show, and we completely forgot to mention that we, that we announced the Worldwide Photo Walk. So we did. We walked the, we, we announced my seventh annual, wow. Seventh annual worldwide photo walk. Uh, it will be uh, on Saturday, October 11th. And uh, what's amazing is, like we announced it last Monday, we're already at 600 cities around the world. We have walks all over the world already. We hit it. It, it says on my notes 5.99, but as I was driving here uh, from the, our, our office down the street, our studios are in one place. Uh, we hit 600. There it is. 600 walks. So. Uh, all you have to do is go to our website, kelby1.com slash photo walk, and uh, you can see the cities that just signed up for photo walks. Look, Bangor, Maine, that's a new one since just this morning. So new city, Long Island City, that one's new. Uh, I think it's Greenville, Texas, Granville, Texas. It's hard to say. Rio de Janeiro. Ah, Rio. Anyway, uh, go and check it out. It's coming up in 51 days, and we're off to an amazing start. There's tons of prizes. We have some amazing prizes. Uh, and anyway, we'd love to have you be a part of the event. So um, it's free, it's fun, and we changed things this year, uh, which if you wind up winning your local walk, mm -hmm. you get a full free year of Kelby One subscription, which is Dude, usually 249 There's bucks. like crazy prizes. Oh, and there's all kinds of, I mean, if you win any of the big competitions, yeah. but even if you just win your local walk, you know, if you, there's like 30 people in your walk and you wind up winning, you still get this. Um, Johan asked, where are you going to walk this year, Scott? I am walking in. London, England. Mm. So I am walking in London, um, and uh, my walk is sold out, and I have 104 people on a waiting list. Don't go get on the waiting list, because everybody would have to leave, and then it would have to be replaced with 50 people, and then another 50 people <laughs> before you actually... It's, so don't even get on the waiting list. But anyway, uh, it, it filled up in an hour, so I was very excited. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. I've got a great route that we're gonna do in London. It's a, a route that I actually did with a walking tour guide a couple of years ago. And the, 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 it wasn't, he wasn't a photographer, he was just a walking tour guide. But it turned out to be a really, I was like, this is like, this, this is would make a photo. great thing. <laughs> so I'm really excited about it. Uh, and I'm gonna announce something. Ready? Dun, dun, dun. Can we, can we build some drama or something? Scott's going to announce something. Dramatic. Hey, I can do an Eddie tap and take my glass off at the moment. Yeah, that's what you should Here do. We Here, let's start over again. So yeah, All that's right. great. London, you're still in some yeah. guys, uh, some guys touring. Yeah, that uh, area. yeah. So I want to do not that. Not gonna be able to do his work that day. That's yeah, great. absolutely. Cool. And uh, the other thing is, um, the day before, on Friday, October 10th, you have a big announcement. I'm gonna do my seminar in London, my shoot like a pro tour in London, the day before. Nice. I'm very excited. <laughs> These are my glasses. I did an Eddie Tap. I don't know if you've ever seen Eddie Tap talk. One of the things I love about Eddie yeah, is when he gets to that moment, he takes off his glasses and says, and you know, oh, here it comes. So, <laughs> and I'm doing my seminar in London. <laughs> and I want you to come. So it's because uh, it's going to be my shoot like a pro tour the day before, and then the next day we're walking. And so, sign oh, up. Okay, so we got to take Glenn's, Glenn's oh, question. Oh, hey, tomorrow we, we, we're, we're, just put, we're getting the page up. So if you go there to register and you go, I don't see anything about London. They're, they say they'll have the, the actual London page up on the site tomorrow. So that's tomorrow. Uh, questions, did you say? All right, so questions. Uh, Charles says, will there be an official Photo Walk t-shirt this year? There will be, uh, absolutely. Uh, it's already designed. We're, we, I don't know what we're waiting on, but yes, there's a official Photo Walk t-shirt. Oh, no, I know. We're supposed to... 
we're supposed to wait. We're supposed to wait a little bit to release it. We've been releasing it too early, we've been told. So, because to, we, we do the official photo walk t-shirt as a fundraiser to raise money for the Springs of Hope Orphanage. And can I talk about that? Is it okay? Because this is really, I think we this is the big important thing that's different this year. So every year we sell these official photo walk t-shirts. 100% of the profits from the t-shirt go to the Springs of Hope Orphanage in Kenya, which is, it's a very small orphanage. It only houses 33 kids, but it houses 33 kids. Mm -hmm. It houses them, it feeds them, it clothes them, it educates them. But the orphanage itself, because the people that run it, M Molly Bale, it, she's got such a big heart, they feed like 170 kids every day. So they, the ongoing needs of this orphanage are tremendous. And it really is supported by people that watch this show, people that support my that watch my blog and have supported it. Uh, and, and a lot of the people on my blog literally donated money and helped build it from scratch. I mean, a few years ago, it was an empty plot of land. We had to buy the land. We had to build this. We had to buy a van. And then the van just got in a wreck. Literally, the van has been totaled. And it's, when you have 33 kids and you're, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. And so we've been able to raise ten to $12,000 a year for the orphanage. This year, we wanted to do something really significant because they really need the money. So what we're doing is we're asking every single person that walks to give just one single dollar, a buck, just one buck. There's a little donation page right there. When you sign up for the walk, you can go, yeah, I'll give a buck. It's a buck. Now, we had internal discussions about this where we're like, uh, you, you don't have to do it. Yeah. It is not forced, but you know what? One of the things I love about this photo walk is the day of the walk, I start sharing group photos from all around the world. I don't care what country it is around the world, all the walkers, 99% of them have beautiful DSLRs with beautiful lenses. You got a buck. You got a dollar. You got a buck for starving orphans. So if you will help us support these kids, our goal this year is $50,000. That is the combination of the t-shirts mm -hmm. and 30 something thousand walkers, which is what we did last year. So, so if you go to sign up and you know, what's really cool though, there are people who are going and signing up and saying $50. And they go, I just want to make sure everybody in my walk is covered. And they're giving 50 bucks. Now, you realize that there'll still be people on that thing that still give the buck. So it really, really helps. So if someone falls through the cracks here and just says, I'm not going to do it, people are stepping up. And so anyway, thank you to everybody. But I wanted you to understand why we're doing it. Because you know what? This year, we want to walk with a purpose. We, it is fun. We have a great time. You'll make new friends. We're going to make millions of images because there's be 30, 40,000 of us walking around the world but we can do something even bigger than that. So we ask you to just give a buck, one buck. Sweet. So give a buck. Uh, give a buck. Hey, where is, uh, Debbie asks, where is Matt's walk this year? Matt can't do one. Why can't Matt do one this year, Matt? Because Matt's traveling back that day. I'm doing a backpack, I'm doing a backpacking trip out west, like a photography you long stay backpacking one more day? trip. You couldn't stay one more day? Dude, I'll be so far out in the wilderness that I but you have to get to an You'd airport. Have to, you have to get to an airport. Yeah. There's not an airport in the city? Yeah, but I want to get home to my family. I want to get home <laughs> to my family. What a loser. I've been gone for like, for like five or six days. Oh, so. S.A. Richard asks, where can I send my $1 if I can't walk? Oh, thank you. Go if to you the do, website, right? Well, you can go to the website. I think there is a donation page. Or you can go to springsofhopekenya.org. And there's a PayPal button right Right on the, you know, and you can sponsor kids. I and mean, they, they have all kinds of ways. But it's, just, it's, it's such a little orphanage. If, and if we didn't keep it rolling, it wouldn't be running. So it, it really means a lot. Thank you for. Yeah. And, and I, I, very kind of you. Thank you very, very much. Um, Glenn Robertson says, uh, so what do you shoot on a photo walk? What I mean is there are so many photographers, won't all images look very much alike? Glenn, you would be stunned. Yeah. You will, you will have the same people walk on the same path and everybody at the end, because we all, you, at the end of the photo walk, we all meet at like a restaurant and everybody stands there and looks and goes, where was this? Where yeah. did you get that? Where I mean, you'll see a couple of dupes, but you really do see, uh-oh. <laughs> Guys carrying buckets. That's not a Buckets good sign. Ice. Oh, that's not good. And so you know what? We're already going to take flack for this because you're supposed to pour the... Uh, dude, I posted a video about this. You would not believe the stuff people critique on ice bucket challenges about dumping the ice in. When you dump the ice in, you'd be amazed. You, 
you'd be absolutely like, amazed. Those are people who have lost I sight know. of what this is I know, about. I know, I know, I know. This is supporting the ALS but, Foundation and I, helping to find a cure, not about how you pour the ice. Back to what, to what Glenn said. Um, so what I can tell you, Glenn, is that most photo walks, you're absolutely right. There's going to be things that you're, you know, the, the photo walk leader will see over and over and over again. But those things are typically not what win the photo walk. Yeah. Because it's the things that everybody goes to shoot is usually not what wins it. It's that person that just has that eye for something that goes off and finds something that nobody else would shoot. And that's, that's the photo that wins. Yeah. And you'll be amazed because you know what? Everybody gets to choose one photo to enter in the competition. Yeah. They don't look alike. Now, sometimes you'll see it'll be at an old church or something, right? And everybody sees it differently. I'll tell you what's more amazing than that, Glenn. When we do a, a landscape workshop, Matt will tell you, we're not walking in the same two miles. We're at one location. You have 25 photographers all lined up in a row. Yeah. You're stunned at how different their mm -hmm. images are. Sometimes you're stunned at how amazing they are. Sometimes you're like, how did you get that? We were there at sunrise in this amazing place. It's a picture of your shoe. Anyway. And the post-processing. The post-processing is wildly different. The way someone processes one Black versus the white, other could make it a tone, totally different. color, you know, whatever. I've got a great question here from uh, uh, UTAC. U UTAC 3R. So why is there no photo walk in Shizis in Poland? Shizis in Poland. Why isn't there one in your town in Poland? So this a is Polish very, person might this is very interesting. Uh, we don't choose the cities. So we don't sit around and go, hey, should we do one in Poland? No. It, the photo walks are actually somebody in that town in Poland. So you tack 3R. Somebody in your town would have had to volunteer to lead a walk. So that's, that's what it comes down to. Every city around the world, someone in that town has said, I'm going, I, I have good organizational skills. I can lead this group. They volunteer. They put it together. They do the route. I mean, all of these leaders volunteer. By the way, the, the leaders also get a prize this year. If you do lead a walk, uh, you also get a year of Kelby one. So they, they get it. Yeah. And, and there's a competition for just for leaders and things so like that as well. Hopefully he got answered with you should start one. Yeah, well, maybe you should start one. Now, yeah. don't start one if you don't have any organizational skills. If you're not good with working with the group, you don't like public speaking to get everybody going, yeah. you're like, you're not the one to do it. But I, I would definitely say that um, that you want to, you know, talk to photographers, find out who, because you know what, in almost every city, there's a photo group. And, and when, when like the leader of a photo group says, hey, I lead the Portland photo group and I want to, we're approved. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. boom, you're in, I'm a university teacher, approved. You know, I lead seminars, approved, you know. But we do review each one because we don't, because sometimes people, I kid you not, they will, they will apply for a walk and they'll say, well, if nobody else will, I will. Probably not going to get you to lead a walk. We need that confidence and that you, yeah. that you can lead a group of people safely along a path. So uh, that's why there's no one in Paul. All right. Dude, he looks way too happy. Pete looks way too oh, happy. Does. Where's RC? Is RC over there? He's hiding. All right, RC looks way hey, too happy. Hey, so we only have, we only have eight minutes too. left, and I want to tackle a topic that is this is we're going back and revisiting something that we've talked about. But I notice a lot of times that we'll say something on the grid, and it, it, gets, it gets taken way, way out of context in a big time. I'll, I'll give an example. I cannot tell you how many times I've read on Twitter, Scott Kelby says you cannot take a photo of a bird. Or a cat. Or a cat. Yeah. I never said that. What we've said so many times before is that if you're going to take a picture of a flower, no, it's, it's a flower, not a, I said a bird. Well, we've flower. said flowers, cats, trees. F flowers, cat. but if you're going to well, use flowers because that's the one I see the most. It says, someone will say, someone will show a picture of a flower on Twitter and someone will say, Scott Kelby says you can't take a picture of a flower. You're not supposed to take pictures of a flower. I never said that. What I said is, flowers are beautiful by nature. If you're going to put a picture of a flower in your portfolio, it better be a good one. It better be a really great flower picture because flowers are just beautiful. So if you're going to put it in your portfolio, make it a really good one. Do you know how far different that is from Scott Kelby says you shouldn't take photos? But I hear that all the time. Yeah. And I'll hear a little thing that Matt said or a little thing that I said, and then the people are laying it down as if we said it's a yeah. rule. And that's what I want to talk about today is one particular. Because there's one that we talked about on the grid. There's one we've talked about right. numerous times on the grid. So we've talked about this topic. And the topic was 
um, that uh, it, the what what well here the topic is F J Westcott the people that make lighting and they make continuous lights we use them here we love their lights in fact I I would say a lot of our set is lit with with their <laughs> lights so their their lights are awesome uh, I actually approached them years ago with an idea and I said I would love for you guys to come to Photoshop World because because they're continuous lights they're the only company that can really do this set up some shooting bays and let people walk up. Because I think if people walked up and saw how easy it is to shoot with continuous lights, because what you're looking at is what you get, that they would fall in love with their lights. And many, many, many thousands of people have. So, but Westcott said, wow, we would love to do that. So they set up, at the very first, at the very next Photoshop world, they set up four different shooting bays. They fully built sets. They brought in like motorcycles. They brought in this guy who looks like James Bond, samurais. Yeah. They brought in all these elaborate sets, hair, makeup, sets, lights. It's all completely done for you to go up and practice mm -hmm. and get to watch it. Now, what we saw was people taking the images that they shot on the show floor at Photoshop World at Westcott's booth and putting them in their portfolio as is, this is my work. We personally, it's our opinion, was that's being disingenuous. Because I would look at their portfolio and you see all these bad photos and then all of a sudden here's a brilliant image. It's like, oh, this person's not very good snapshot, bad, bad. Wow, yeah. where did this come from? They went oh, to a workshop. <laughs> it's, the, it's, the, it's the Westcott shot. Mm -hmm. So what we said was this. If Westcott, if Westcott hires the model, hires a makeup artist, hires the, you know, does the, comes up with the concept. Cause like they've had some wild concepts. They had one with an alien coming out of a giant egg with lights beaming out. I mean, they're- the, Cinderella, the, yeah. Whoever the creative people at Westcott are, they're brilliant. They've done some really, really, I mean, they, they don't just throw some lights together. They create an entire production. There's no way that the photographer that I'm looking at their portfolio could ever create that shot without Westcott. So it's disingenuous for you to go, this is a sample of my work. Because literally, you could have, and I'm not joking, you could have a trained lab rat come up and press the button on a tripod in front of Westcott and get the same shot. So, but someone's taken, so I got a letter this week from someone that said, hey, you know, uh, you said we're not allowed to put these in your, our portfolio. That's they not were true. very upset. They were very upset. And I'm like, oh, no, no. I never said you couldn't. I said, I don't think it's right. You can do whatever you want. I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't. I don't think Matt would. We've actually seen people enter into competitions and win competitions, actually win a photo competition based on an image that they took at Westcott's booth. The award should go to F.J. Westcott. Now, in Westcott's own thing, they, they'll say, Westcott will say, come by the booth, try out our lights, make some amazing shots for your portfolio. That's fine. They're a lighting company. They're welcome. They can say anything they like. And if it's okay with Westcott, they're a different company. I don't, you know. And didn't this, and I think if we talked about this, right, this person even said that Westcott had said this was okay. Yeah, that's and, fine. And that was part of the, that was part of the, I think the anger there is they were saying, you said it's not, and they said it is. Yeah. Uh, but those are just differing opinions. Yeah. You, you are absolutely perfectly fine to stick it in your work. It's just our opinion is I disagree. I don't think that's fair. I think that you would be lying to people saying this is what, what you do because you can't do that. Now, if, you, if you're really great, let me put it this way. If Joe McNally walks by and takes a picture at the Westcott booth, Joe can back it up. In fact, Joe, whatever the people did at Westcott, as good as they are, I'd say Joe may be even be able to do better. <laughs> So Joe goes by and moves right. stuff. Yeah, Joe goes by like these lights are in the wrong place. Let me do this here. Well, you need on. to do this and here, here, wear this helmet. You know, he'll come up with all kinds of crazy stuff. But Jump. anyway, that's the difference. Just so I wanted to address that because we've had, had someone write in here and then, and they're doing that thing where we take we say one little thing and they decide to make it a law like it's carved into stone. That's not the case. It was simply our opinion. But as you know, our opinion is always right. Yeah. That's a joke. 
Just a joke. All right, dude, okay. I'm starting to get worried. All right, it's time. It is now 5 o'clock. Now, we're... Because I know what this feels like. Okay, I don't know it what this feels like. It doesn't feel good. So can I t- say something about... We're about to do the ALS challenge here. And and if you haven't haven't seen what it is, this is a, a wonderfully clever, brilliant thing to raise money for ALS research and to find a cure. The thing is... Um, This is the way I understand it. Now, I've been on location for two solid days, all right? So I didn't even know about this until RC sent me an email about it. I didn't even know it exists. I guess it's been around for weeks or something or some amount of time. I didn't have any idea. So what we did, what what they said was, and this is my understanding, but I'm not an expert at this because literally I've been gone for two solid days, shooting all day and all night. So what I understand is, The idea is to use this ice bucket challenge to raise money for ALS. If you're willing to take a bucket of ice water and pour it over your head or have somebody pour it on your head, you only have to donate $10. Somebody challenges you, like somebody calls Mm -hmm. you out. The person that called me out, my buddy Tony Curtis, who was Naval Photographer of the Year, he called me out. I saw it like on Twitter. Ooh, Tony Curtis says I have to do it. And so apparently you're supposed to have 24 hours to do it. And Tamerlaki. And Tamara Lackey called, called me out, out too. too. <laughs> All right. Tamara just got cut from Photoshop. She called us both out at the same time. Yeah. That's All right. how I ended up so, doing so it. So I'm just like all twice. catching up on this like this morning. So I wake up and I go donate it. Now, the deal was if you pour the over your head, you only have to donate $10. $10. Bucks. If you don't and you don't want the ice bucket, you have to donate $100. 100 So I went this morning and I donated $100. So I think... I'm out. You're in the clear. I'm in the clear. But apparently other people that are giving 100 are still pouring the bucket over their head. So I've been informed for reasons I can't understand by people here that I will be receiving a bucket momentarily. Now let's talk about Matt. You've done it. <laughs> Tell me what happened. All right. So, so Tamara called me out over the weekend. And, uh, and, and so I was, you know, I was going to do it and my I was going to get my kids involved and everything. So Sunday we're kind of like hanging out, you know, I got my, we're in back at the pool. I got my bathing suit on. So all of a sudden the neighborhood kids are out front doing it. Cause one of them got called out. So my kids go out there. So I'm like, all right, no time better than now. So I go out there and I do it and I have, I give one of my, the neighborhood kids my phone and they had all done it. And I made sure we saved like a whole big bucket of ice to do mine with. So I give him my phone, and I've, I've been running out of space on my phone. Like every time, every time I take pictures, it won't let me because I have to delete stuff. So I give him my phone, set up to record, and I do the whole thing. And I, have, well, I brought my kids into it. I wanted them to dump the ice in and dump, dump, dump it on my head. So they do it, and the kid hands me back my phone, and he says, um, it stopped recording when you were kind of talking about what you were doing. And I'm like, and you didn't tell me? He's like, I, I, I didn't want to stop you. <laughs> what was funny is one of the moms was there too, and she's like, oh my God, she's like, and you sounded so eloquent. And I'm like, that's what gets you about this, is I have to do another take because I sounded eloquent the first time. I'm like, I gotta dump ice again. You're very eloquent. I know, I'm like, I got that part. So, uh, so anyway, so I did it again, there was no ice. We had exhausted all neighbors around us. We'd already gone to them already. So it's like, it was this little bowl of ice. So I've, I've been, so it's, been you- it's been suspect. Of my my ice bucket challenge has been called into question. I think there's plenty of ice in the buckets that Pete and Oh, I RC bought the ice. I, so I, I think they've already. Have you guys already poured in? It's, so it's, it's been steeping. I I bought the 20 pound bags of ice this time. I didn't buy the 10 pound bags. I bought the bags of ice that are this big. I don't see anybody right. dumping that much. All right. Now I do want to say this. So so you gave you give 10 bucks? Yes. All right. You should get more ice. <laughs> now me. I gave you the hundred. Get less no, I gave the hundred. Now, but here's the thing: I was willing to do it until I saw the size of those ice buckets. <laughs> now, I have come up with a strategy. I'm going out there with you. We're going to take a live camera. I got the. I did bring back. the. I bought the big five gallon. I have gallon a strategy. Buckets. I brought some expensive lenses. Uh, if you are ha- holding something like a laptop or a camera body or some lenses in your hand, there's no way employees of mine, people whose so dude, income, you're not going to do it now. So people whose income. Is You're tied. not going to do I it I didn't now? say that. I just said. I'm You're going to hold lenses. I'm just saying that if I was holding my laptop or lenses, it would be silly for people oh. to, to come and pour water on me. But I think it's time to go pour water on you at least. Hey, we're going right. to go out. I'm going to go out with Matt. But hey. here's the thing. Wait, wait. We have giveaways. We have giveaways. We have Peter Reed Miller's book on sports photography. And then we also have Harold Davis, The Way of the Digital Photographer. So. And I'm giving away a ticket to my Kansas City and uh, St. Louis seminars next week. So uh, just uh, when, you, when you go, where do they enter the contest? 
uh, kelby1.com forward slash webcasts slash contest. Pick the show. Most important part, leave your name, email, website, but leave a comment on what you want to win. And we're going to wrap up the show from here, and then we're going outside. Yeah, because I'm not sure we're, I'm, I'm going to be able to talk after. It's, it takes your breath away. Does it? Yes. Oh, crap. <laughs> well, I don't what I care. So anyway, uh, that's the prizes thing. Uh, hey, so uh, we have, uh, RC says, um, while... Uh, uh, yeah, I saw this. I read this while online. While normally the ALS receives $1.5 million during this time period, the Ice Bucket Challenge has raised $15.6 million in the same time period. Uh, many do it and donate to help keep the movement along, and then they challenge three people. Oh, you get to challenge three people? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I know one person I'm going to do. I, 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 would, I, had, I only had one ready. But it doesn't look like I'll have to do it anyway. The important part of this is to tell people to donate and to do it and to go hey. to ALS. Is it ALSA? I thought it was just ALS.org. It's ALSA.org uh, to get aware of what ALS is and how it affects people. Also, make it's sure. not just the bucket of you, ice. You've got to go because I called out uh, RC, Corey, Pete, and Mia. So I called out you know, the whole fellow content. I know I didn't know, I didn't know there was a specific a specific number, but I called them out. So you got to go to the the Kelby one. Is it the Twitter account? Probably is the best place to go. Yeah. You got to go there because they went above and beyond. They did it with garbage cans full really? of ice and water, dude. They did it from up high. Like Pete was up high on a forklift, dude. They they went way further than All I'm right. gonna go. We're stalling. All right, let's go. All right, we're going. <laughs> Looking for a better way to learn Lightroom? At Kelby One, you'll be learning from people who literally wrote the book on Lightroom, including best-selling author Scott Kelby and Lightroom instructor Matt Kluskowski. Scott and Matt lead a team of some of the best-known names in the Lightroom education field who've come together to create the most comprehensive Lightroom training anywhere. You'll have unlimited access to full-length online classes that cover everything you need to know about how to use Lightroom like a pro, from start to finish. But these in-depth online classes are just the beginning. As a member, you'll learn even more about Lightroom from our monthly print magazine, Photoshop User, which has an entire section dedicated just to Lightroom users. Also, you get access to our Lightroom Help Desk, where you get private, one-on-one -on -one answers to your Lightroom questions, including troubleshooting, concepts, you name it. For years now, the creative world has turned to us as the resource for learning Lightroom, and now you can too. Whether you're in Lightroom Pro or a brand new user, this is a training program that grows right along with you every step of the way and is exclusively here at Kelby One. I really believe that your photography is a reflection of who you are. I consider myself a very fun guy, very fashionable guy, very passionate. That's pretty much what I'm after when it comes to my photography. You can be recognised for a particular style, but at the same time, I almost want to fool my audience into you know, showing something that you just wouldn't expect. If we're talking about a bride, I want her to look and feel amazing. In my posing class, you're going to learn a lot of things. How to pose a bride and bring out the best in her shape and her curves. You had a photograph a groom because many of us who may focus on the bride will ignore the groom. Also, how to photograph a couple together. And getting your clients to mirror you. Mirroring, I find, is the best way of getting people to pose. I'm Jerry Guionis. Check out my class on the fine art of posing at kelbytraining.com. Here at Kelby One, we're launching an innovative new tool for beginners called Beginner Start Here. It'll lay the foundation needed to understand your camera and walk you through how to capture beautiful images. And the best part is, all you have to do is tell us a little bit about yourself, such as your camera manufacturer, your DSLR model, and what you're interested in. And we'll design a custom curriculum to help you take your photography to the next level. It's that simple. It's the perfect way to learn at your own pace, on your own time. Plus, with a subscription, you get access to our online training wherever you are, so you can replay specific clips or even repeat the entire class if you'd like. We'll take you step by step 
right through the process so you can start taking good images in no time. And as you grow, we have a huge library of classes on all different kinds of photography techniques that can help you take your photography beyond the basics. So if you're just starting out and itching to turn that mode dial to something other than auto, then this is for you. And we're passionate about teaching you how every step of the way. Start here at kelby1.com today. Before we do this, number one, note that I'm holding expensive equipment. Number two, I'm gonna call out Jeff Ravel from PhotoWalk Pro and Terry White from Adobe. And, and I, I got, go I'll ahead. Do, I'll do, we'll just do three between us. All right, go ahead. I'll do Brian Matias from Google. From Google. From All Google. right. Ooh. All right, yeah. somebody, somebody hold this. That's cold. That's really cold. Now, remember, it's not about the ice. Go to ASLA.com. ASLA. A. That, where is it? I didn't even know it was coming then. I thought we were going to do a countdown. I'll tell you what, I need a coffee. Ah, oh, there we go. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Jeez.